Now, most drones operate with what we call fixed pitch propellers. And that means the shape of the propeller does not change. The pitch is the angle that generates the lift when the propeller is rotating. Because the pitch angle cannot change, the only way we can vary the thrust is to increase or decrease the RPM. More revs means more lift, less RPM means less lift. It works fine on drones, but when you're talking about radar controlled helicopters and certainly full sized helicopters, there is a much better way to do it. So on full sized helicopters like this, and also the more advanced radar controlled models, the amount of lift being generated by the main rotor is not varied by changing the RPM. It varies by changing the actual pitch of the blades themselves. And we'll look at how that is done shortly. So I'll digress for a minute and just explain some of the features on this helicopter, which is a Eurocopter AS350B2 Squirrel. This is one I flew personally many times when I worked for the New South Wales Police Aviation Support Branch. It is marked in police colours at the moment, but most of my flying was done when it was in a covert grey colour scheme. On the front here, you can see two spikes, one on the top and one on the bottom. That is part of the wire strike protection system. There is also a hardened rail at the centre of the main cockpit window. Now the idea there is that if you fly into a power line, and you need a bit of forward speed for this to be effective, the wire will be channeled up to the cutters, one at the top and one at the bottom. And the idea there is that it will cut the wire rather than damage the helicopter. And down here we have a forward looking infrared system and at the rear of the helicopter a night sun, which is an extremely powerful searchlight. Both of these could be operated by the front or rear seat observer. We generally operated with three crew, one pilot and two observers. Now the night sun would be used to illuminate a search area. For example, if offenders had to camp from a stolen car and were hiding in bushes, we could light up the area with a night sun. Now most of the time, when they know we are looking for them with the light, they won't move. So what we used to do is just deliberately point the night sun in the wrong direction. And that would give them the false hope that we were looking in the wrong place. But the whole time, we could see them very clearly with the infrared. We caught many that way. So lots of happy memories flying those police helicopters. But back to the main topic. The pitch angle on the rotor blades are changed with a system called a swash plate. Now this swash plate can slide up and down the main shaft and it can also tilt in any direction. And that gives us the ability to change the pitch on the blades simultaneously throughout the entire rotation, which is called collective, or we can have the blade angle changing at different parts of the rotation. And that is called cyclic. And that is what allows the helicopter to move forwards and backwards and sideways. So the collective pitch varies the blades altogether and the cyclic varies them at various different positions around the rotation. Collective pitch causes the helicopter to go up and down. Cyclic pitch gives us the maneuverability. This is an FAA document showing us the collective pitch lever. It is generally to the left hand side of the pilot seat and by pushing the lever down, the pitch angle on the main rotors is reduced. The helicopter goes down. By pulling the lever up, the pitch angle on the main rotors is increased, giving us more lift and causing the helicopter to go up. So I'll demonstrate how the swash plate works for collective and cyclic pitch changes using one of my radar controlled helicopters. And even though this is a small model, the full size helicopters operate in a similar fashion. I haven't powered this one up for years, but it's a collective pitch helicopter. And that means when I move the right hand stick, which is a mode one radio, it has throttle and collective. You can see that the pitch of the helicopter blades is changing. I've just got the motor held off so that the blades don't rotate. Now that is the collective pitch, which means we get an increase on both blades simultaneously. And then we have cyclic, which means this swash plate is rotating left to right or 
fore and aft. And what that does is change the pitch of the blades at different points around its rotation. So for example, full right aileron will change the blade significantly at that point. Whereas full right aileron doesn't really change much when the rotor is in that position. So this is the Mars helicopter. And as you can see, it has two rotors. One is located above the other. This is known as a coaxial helicopter. And if you do a search for Kamov helicopter in Google, you will see plenty of full-size coaxial helicopters. Now the benefit with these is that they do not require a tail rotor. All of the power from the motor can be used to generate lift. In a traditional helicopter, about 10 to 15% of the engine power is used to just drive the tail rotor to compensate for the torque reaction. With a coaxial helicopter, all of the power goes into the lift. So it is quite logical to me why they chose a coaxial design for the Mars helicopter. It is a lot more efficient than a traditional helicopter design. What we can also clearly see in this image are the two swash plates that control the pitch on the upper and the lower blades, giving it the lift and also the maneuverability required. So the Mars helicopter is a coaxial collective pitch helicopter and that means the RPM of the rotor blades will be fairly constant and the pitch of the blades will be used to increase and decrease lift when required. Let's now listen to a flat earther demonstrate that he has no understanding of how this coaxial helicopter actually works. What makes matters worse is that this guy used to go around claiming that he was a commercial pilot. But we know that isn't true, don't we, Bob? Your FAA record shows that you only held a private pilot's license and your medical expired 40 years ago. Take it away, Bob. Pinfoil, but one thing that really struck me is that, you know, being a pilot, I know that one thing that really matters, especially when you're uh, flying at a high altitude, and um, you know, I was originally trained as a pilot at sea level, and then I went up and started flying at 5280, you know, which is considerably higher. And one thing that we had to do, you know, in our variable prop pitch planes is increase the pitch of the propeller. Why did we have to do that? Well, the reason is, is because when you have a propeller that only takes this much of a bite, I should say, out of the atmosphere, in other words, the angle of attack that it literally hits the atmosphere with, um, you have to take a bigger bite, if you will, out of the atmosphere. In other words, you have to have a much larger pitch than what is showing here. You guys can probably see my little uh, hand here. And this is a very, very, very mild pitch, and this is almost ridiculous, to be honest with you. This should have something that should be two to three times this easily. So it's not ridiculous, Bob. That low amount of pitch is because it is a collective pitch helicopter sitting on the ground. When it comes time to lift off, the pitch on those blades will increase by two, three, and even four times to generate the lift required. You can see very clearly the swash plate in this image too. So how could you not know the basic operation of a coaxial helicopter. It's just one of the first things that, that I noticed when I looked at this thing is how ridiculously mild the pitch of this, these propeller blades are. Um, so that's how, how, how would that do a better job than any drone that they have now in the market? Well, here's uh, this is the, the funny part. They claim that, well, it's going to do a better job because A, it's got the two propellers, right, that are, that are opposing each other in rotation, which uh, does more for stability really than it does for, um, you know, lift. Um, well, it does help stability, but it also improves the amount of lift because you don't have to waste any power in a tail rotor as you have on a traditional helicopter, robbing power from the lift. At least when you have the counter opposing uh, propellers like this, you eliminate the torque you, the torques counteract each other and then that the craft itself doesn't go spinning out of control right but um beyond that you know they say well the big difference here is is that it's it's the blades are rotating between two and three thousand rpm 
which is like, you know what, big whoop, you know, so they're running at 2,400 RPM, I think is what they were saying optimal. And really for something that's the size of a drone, that's really not that fast. And I don't know how fast drone propellers, you know, are turning here on earth. But again, remember, we're talking about it has to get through an atmosphere that is 100 times less dense than the atmosphere that we have here, right? So, And don't forget that gravity is only 38% of what it is on the Earth too. So it has to do half or less than half the amount of work that it would need to do on the Earth anyway. 24 to 2500 RPM for a 1.2 meter rotor is plenty. That can generate a lot of lift. Let's see what 1.2 meters rotor diameter actually looks like. And we'll call on Emma's help for that. Emma, do you like Daddy's helicopter? Uh -huh. This could almost carry you. Uh -huh. Do you want to go for a ride in this helicopter? Uh -huh. Yeah, I think we'll leave it to another day. Uh -huh. Turn the blades. You can turn the blades. Wow, very good. This is called a Gowie. Uh -huh. Can you say Gowie? Gowie. Exactly. Gowie X5. Say Gowie. Gowie. X. Five. Very good. Precisely that. The forward flip. So as you can see, in the Earth's atmosphere, 1.2 metres of rotor spinning at 2,500 RPM generates ample lift to throw this helicopter around easily, even performing aerobatics. Now this helicopter weighs more than the Mars helicopter and is operating in Earth gravity. Granted, on Mars, the atmosphere is only 1% of what we have here on Earth, but they're not trying to do aerobatics. Look at the rotor design. It has a very deep cord at the root, a taper and rounded edges. That is a very high lift, high efficiency design. It has two rotors. The weight of the Mars helicopter is a lot less than the Gowie and also it is operating in 38% of Earth's gravity. And that leaves me with no doubt at all that this thing could actually fly. So we are a family that loves anything that flies, and this small coaxial helicopter was the first gift I bought for my wife, and I gave it to her on our third date. We did the long distance romance for the first year because she was living in New Zealand, and I was living in Australia and traveling frequently. So it was a month between our third and our fourth dates. And this video was taken during the fourth date after she had learned to fly it quite well. This was the third date in Auckland when I first gave her the helicopter. She just couldn't wait to try it. And while I was away in Montreal, she would send me sand images like this. See fellas, the perfect girl does exist.
Daddy, what am I doing? Daddy, what am I doing? Uh -huh. I'm playing with my remote controlled helicopter. Uh -huh. You haven't seen these fly, have you? Mama, what are you doing? <laughs>